Are you working? What kind of work do you do? Welcome to the Philly EDC Holster Clinic, where Kydex craftsmen from across America and beyond are sending in their holsters for us to give them our honest feedback about what could be better, what could be improved, and what they're doing right. Hey, what's up folks, and welcome to episode 16 of the Holster Clinic. Today we've got Guardian Angel holsters uh, with two items. They've shown up uh, previously in uh, other episodes, and we're taking a look at some other things that they've sent us. Uh, the first one, I think, is a pretty interesting design. It's kind of a play on the uh, hybrid style holster with a leather back and a Kydex uh, shell on the front. Uh, I think, uh, in terms of the idea, this is uh, pretty good. Um, there are a couple things I'm looking for in the execution, however. Um, and uh, we'll start with, uh, we'll start from the top and work our way down. On this item, you got yourself uh, some injection molded loops. Very good idea. There are solutions for this here as well. Um, I would recommend the, uh, <coughs> the uh, IWB clip uh, designed uh, by our friend Tony over at Multi Holsters, who's uh, having them uh, produced and sold through Index Fasteners. That's a good solution for what you're trying to do here. So you don't wind up with this clip where the uh, finish on it is kind of interesting. There's this like deep bevel around the edge here. There's um, overglossing and overheating and there's a crease uh, down the middle of this fold here and um, Kydex J-hooks always break. They always break. Ask anybody who's been making holsters for a year or two, they have, will have stopped using Kydex J-hooks. They break with a just uh, disturbing rate of frequency, get yourself an injection molded component for this. Also, instead of using a gnarly little piece of uh, Kydex as a spacer here, or is that Kydex? I can't tell what that is. Um, uh, because I couldn't get these screws out because they seem to be Loctited in there. Those are going to be difficult for you to remove in the event that this breaks and you have to replace it under warranty. Um, use rubber for this application here. Rubber's flexible and it transmits the flex of the clip into the rubber rather than forcing the clip to bend excessively, which is what's going to cause it to break uh, over the long period of t uh, time that it gets used. Um, next uh, step down, the uh, definition of the mold is pretty good. Um, you've got a couple spots here that I can tell where you um, uh, overheated with the heat gun or some, some other such thing and just be more careful with your heat gun. The muzzle end of this has like a uh, interesting little wavy thing going on. What you can do, and uh, we posted some pictures up of it recently, is if you're gonna have, if you wanna get like a really clean edge on the muzzle termination, especially when you're doing something like this where it folds down the entire way, just put a little spacer at the end of the muzzle to square it off so when you cut it, you get a square cut, you don't get a funny wavy cut. You can also crop it closer uh, than the muzzle on that, and you can run a 17 in this too, which I think could be a good thing. And considering that the back of this is flexible and you won't run into any of the issues that you might with other styles of holsters uh, in encountering the uh, small differences in dimensions of the 26, if you just keep it cropped open, you can make this fit this, the uh, 26, the 19, the 17, and the 34, which uh, is pretty good. Um, it was smart to put the um, rolled face of the eyelet on the back side because what can happen over a period of time and a lot of use is that you pull these rivets through the leather. So it's probably better that they're riveted like this. Um, although I would take a look at the way, if you can get a hold of one, take a look at the way Crossbreed mounts their leather to their Kydex and sort of model it after what they're doing because they are the, uh, pardon me, the go-to folks for that kind of thing. Um, I would avoid really sharp right angle cuts like this. Um, first of all, they're really difficult to finish, as I'm sure you can tell. And then on top of it, right angle cuts lead to cracks. Uh, let's take a look at it like that. Yeah, these the right angle cut there, uh, where this starts to come up. And it also sort of starts to do it down here. I'd avoid really tight cuts like that, especially since you're just making it uh, more difficult for yourself. You're not quite getting a consistent finish on everything just yet. So I would simplify your cuts until you can 
get that down uh, pat. Um, I, I would imagine that you're using adhesive to adhere this to the side. Um, I would be, you know, that's probably a pretty good idea, but in the event that over a long period of time the leather wears out <clears throat> and, it, and it starts to deteriorate, you may want to give yourself an option to repair or replace that. Uh, making this with adhesive uh, limits your options in terms of that, and it also gives you this uh, edge treatment, which is evidently difficult to overcome. So I think you're kind of overdoing it with the uh, adhesive. Uh, you're making more problems for yourself than you need to. Um, also, uh, these eyelets aren't straight with each other uh, or with the edge. I would uh, pay a little closer attention to how that's uh, dealt with. So uh, from the top down, get yourself an injection molded clip. Use rubber uh, for that standoff. Um, I would simplify your cuts and uh, make it a little easier, a little easier on yourself. Reduce kind of like the amount of like waviness and tight corners that you have to address and um, if you're going to, if you want to make a big step in improving your fit and finish, uh, avoid the glue that's making problems for yourself, and uh, keep this keep this end nice and clean and square. Like build in a mold for it or whatnot, or uh, just crop it entirely and give yourself some more options in terms of what the gun's going to fit. Uh, also, um, one final thing, I would look into getting a leather that has a raw back because that's a little softer on the body and this um, slick leather will shift around when it's in contact with with like your your you know underwear or, or your skin so this will this will tend to slide a little bit and give you um, uh, a different kind of comfort issue so I'd go with like the raw uh, leather back that has a little bit more traction um, <coughs> this holster uh, I'm sorry to say has uh, quite a few um, significant problems. Uh, the first one being that I cannot even get the gun into the holster. It, it doesn't go. It's about the best I can do. Um, so we'll start with that. Here, pull Mikey. When you fold it, for, first of all, I We've shipped hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of holsters. The event that something changes about the holster during shipping uh, is galactically small. So I would imagine that this got to us exactly the way you made it. Uh, unless you are shipping something to the Sahara and it's in a steel shipping container in the desert for a long period of time, nothing's really gonna change about this holster. It's not going to expand or contract significantly. So. I would venture to put money on the fact that you shipped it to me exactly as it sits uh, right now. Which means that either uh, there's something going on with your blue gun or your actual gun, or you didn't test fit it. Um, what has occurred is that when you bent this here, you crushed in the trigger guard such that it creates a pinch. Now I'm gonna show you what happens here. Um, now, I'm, I'm explaining this because I can tell by the overheating that is epidemic on this. Can you, is it picking up the glossiness? There's an epidemic of overheating uh, going on. I can tell that you spot heated it in every single place you could think of to try and uh, get the retention right um, and like alleviated stuff out um, when the problem was right in front of you. When you folded the holster, you created a circumstance and you can see it right there, where that pinch starts to, is there a shadow? Um, that pinch starts to uh, uh, contact the trigger guard, creating a lot of pressure this way against the gun such that it doesn't go into the holster. That's something you could have fixed in two seconds with the heat gun rather than attacking it uh, and, and glossing it everywhere. Um, Another thing is, I looked inside the holster to see what was going on, and it appears to me as though the inside of this holster has been attacked with something. 
Um, I would venture to say that it's been like sanded on the inside, which um, I have no idea why that would occur. Either you sanded it in preparation to adhere felt to it, like you did with the um, uh, uh, previous holster you, holster you sent in, or I would imagine that it was sanded uh, possibly as a way to try and figure out what's going on with the uh, 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 retention. I, I can't even begin to imagine. Um, but whatever you're doing, you shouldn't be sanding the inside of your holster. That does not, that does not need to occur. It's already perfectly smooth. Um, so uh, don't be doing that. Uh, the other thing, the edge, I can still see marks in the edge from uh, sanding. It's in inconsistent side to side. It goes from matte to shiny to kind of raw overall. Um, when you install the belt loops, let me see, can you see this? Make sure that there's enough space between your eyelets and the edge of the kayak such that you don't get the belt loop overhanging in this, in this sloppy way, either down at the corner or along the side. Just keep it clean and make sure that that's kind of like obscured and in the background. Um, and uh, on this side as well, you can see that the belt loops in at an angle in relationship to everything else and you get the tip of it overhanging uh, the edge of the material here. So make sure that these guys are straight, that you measure and sand in relationship to that uh, edge there. This eyelet is kind of strangely spaced. If anything, it's going to do you more good to place it here where you bend it. Um, which will help prevent it from getting wavy or opening up down here, which I imagine is, is frustrating. So instead of locating it over here where it doesn't actually do anything for you, locate it at the point where uh, the fold, where you plan on putting the fold such that it uh, creates a little more structural help uh, along the line of the fold and it prevents that kind of like waviness or buckling. Uh, that's just one uh, tip there. Um, additionally, I was uh, taking a look at this when the camera stopped. Another thing that might be making it difficult for the gun to go into the holster is that when you folded it, you folded it up top here at the sight channel, and when you place that fold here, you're kind of collapsing the, uh, the shape of the top of the slide. So you're uh, making it tighter this way uh, overall. So um, that's something to look out for. Give yourself a little bit more space, or, I mean, frankly, bending it this deeply isn't really gonna do you a whole heck of a lot of good. It's gonna make it difficult to feed the belt in, and um, the amount of curve that needs to exist in the holster in order to accommodate most people's bodies isn't as significant as you think it is. Um, most people don't have a 18 and a half inch waist, and uh, this curve radius probably would correspond to a circle that's maybe about that big overall. You know, if we imagine the size of the person whose uh, waist this would conform to, they would be about this big, which is about a third smaller than I am, and I uh, <laughs> and I'm only a 30 inch waist. So keep in mind that doesn't this doesn't need to be necessarily as tight as it, tight a, a radius as it is. A um, couple other things. <clears throat> I can tell that you're committed to cropping this really close to the uh, muzzle, but that creates this um, kind of like asymmetry here that you may or may not be uh, satisfied with. Uh, make sure that when you're pressing your holster, you've got enough extra material in every direction such that the Kydex can sort of come back to a, you know, a flatten out and give you give yourself plenty of room to work with, give yourself a nice clean uh, 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 mold to work with, and then that way you can you cut it, you know, right where the kydex starts to come together, and you get a nice, perfectly clean muzzle opening. Or if you don't want to do that, put something in here, like a little wood spacer or something, such that it meets the wood spacer, and when you cut it close, you get a square opening rather than this complex weird cut that you have to uh, deal with. Um, again, on this holster you're doing these 90 degree cuts that you can't uh, really address and then you wind up with this sort of weird jagging, jaggedness that goes all the way around the edge of uh, 
both of these openings also with inconsistent uh, fit and finish. So um, I would, um, yeah, like this shape kind of really doesn't have anything to do with um, anything that's aesthetic about the gun. You know, it doesn't, it's not sympathetic to uh, any of the forms of the gun and it doesn't really do anything in terms of uh, the, the human anatomy that it's going to interface with either. So be deliberate about your decisions. Uh, you know, either you're making a functional decision or you're making an aesthetic decision. And uh, when you make a decision like that, commit to it and uh, understand why you're doing it. Um, yeah, I mean, for example, I don't know if you can see this from the top, but the the shielding isn't symmetrical. Why would this? Why would the front of it need to come up? higher than the back of it in this specific spot, you know, the, the just th think about things like that, you know, uh, and you'll wind up with a much more uh, consistent, deliberate, intentional looking uh, uh, holster, and you'll also wind up with something that uh, actually functions, which is the number one uh, uh, priority here. Um, as of uh, now, this one just straight up doesn't, and I would uh, look into those the things we mentioned previously in order to correct that. Um, so yeah, you know, be aware that when you're when you're folding, you know, or putting a bend into a holster, you're uh, uh, potential you have the potential to change the dimensions of the mold you've created. So be sure that when you're using a heat gun, you're using one with a, 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 some sort of like a nozzle or diffuser such that the heat goes where you want it and you're not just heating it and, and folding it and crushing the whole thing inadvertently. So um, uh, I, you know, I'd say this is uh, for the time being, seeing as I can't even fit my gun in it, that's a, a no-go. Um, and there are a couple things I would work on with this holster in, you know, if, if I had a choice between this and um, uh, a variety of other things currently, considering that, you know, like, like you're aware of, you can just hop online and get yourself some injection molded um, belt loops, you, the clip is absolutely essential to be injection molded, absolutely, it's con especially considering now that they're so readily available. That's that's a must. That's a must. This is the point. This is the main point of failure on the holster, um, and and it will fail inevitably. So, uh, in terms of what you're trying to accomplish with this, get a better solution for this. One that's not going to result in uh, fit and finish issues, and one that you know you can just bolt right on with rubber spacers, and it will uh, uh, work absolutely. So yeah, I'd uh, clean up the. Uh, be more intentional about the cuts you make and make sure that if you're making a cut, you can get in there and finish it. Um, if, if you take a look at uh, some of the holsters that we make, all of our holsters have straight cuts on them and easy angles. And that's very much on purpose. Um, it's not a matter, I mean, it's, to a degree, it's a matter of if we make them more complex, then they become more time consuming and considering the the number that we make, they need to have a certain amount of production simplicity built into the design, in addition to their sim simplistic nature uh, t to, to a degree. But we're not creating unnecessary obstacles for ourselves. You know, These things get primarily, with the exception of uh, the TDI sheath, with the exception of the opening for the TDI sheath, everything gets cut straight on a bandsaw and then sanded on the belt sander. They're all straight cuts with angles that aren't too tight to, um, to access. And if you're having trouble with anything, if you're encountering an area of inconsistency, make it consistent for yourself. So that's, uh, that's my advice. I'm you know, looking forward to seeing what you come up with next.